Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm showing you how I make this delicious Haitian bouillon. Now my Haitian bouillon is so delicious that I am certain if you follow these instructions to the T, honey, this bouillon will have you coming back to this channel for some more bomb recipes. It is that good. My husband nominates me, me, Lisa, as the best bouillon maker ever okay please guys help me celebrate in the comment <laughs> i'm a little extra but you know what for this video let me be a little extra because i honestly love my bouillon my family loves my bouillon my husband adores my bouillon so i know this is good stuff here now i am making a very 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 big pot because once i'm making bouillon everybody wants some i have to share my whole family five siblings if my mom's in town she's getting some sometimes i send some to my aunt so the whole family about to eat in this huge pot of bouillon so it is a large quantity of ingredients being used but however even if you're making half of this amount or a quarter of this amount you are going to follow the exact same steps all you have to do is alter it of course to the amount that you are making so i hope that makes sense So we're starting off with the dumplings. Who doesn't like dumplings, okay? It is my favorite part and my family's favorite part of the bouillon. And I did write the instructions of how I make my dumplings, but this video was recorded about a month ago and I lost it, so I am sorry about that. But in this bowl here, I have about two cups of flour and a teaspoon of salt you mix it all in you put the right amount of water for your dumplings i would say about a half cup of water but you can pretty much eyeball this video and see what it should look like you don't want it to be too loose and you also don't want it to be too sticky what i do is i kind of just mix everything in together and then i use another half cup of flour and i pour that on top and that helps to roll up your dumplings a lot easier I don't like my dumplings to be super big and I also don't like them to be tiny. So this is the right amount for me, but of course you can make it as you please. But this is what I do. I pull off a part. I grab some more flour just to help me roll it up really nice. And I'm going to get a nice and firm a ball that's what you're looking for so you roll it up until you get a nice solid ball it's not too hard and it's not too soft and then when you get that solid firm ball then you start to roll the opposite direction to form the shape of the dumpling that I have here okay and that is all you have to do and I'm gonna continue doing these same steps until I have a massive plate of dumplings like this that is why I do it at the beginning because it does take a lot of arm work it does take a lot of time and honey my family we love dumplings so you can't show up with a pot of bouillon and don't have like a whole bunch of dumplings in there because it just won't work with us okay so this is how I do my dumplings it's very easy give it a try let me know in the comment how it worked out for you of course if you're making less than I did then you do a quarter or half of this dumpling here and you could just lay them out in the plate and just wait until it's time to put it in the pot now let's carry on so I have a video on my channel of how I clean and season my meat I will link it above and in the description box as usual I have in here just one tablespoon of olive oil and then I pour in my meat that was already pre-seasoned I'm putting in some crushed garlic right here oh you cannot cook without some garlic even if my Haitian piece is full of garlic I just like to have extra garlic because it really enhances the taste and I am not adding any water and all I have in this pot right now is the cleaned and seasoned meat, the garlic, and just about half cup of water. The reason why you don't add water now is because you want your meat to cook, and as it's cooking on a low to medium heat, it's going to run its own liquid, and that liquid is going to be so 
balm, that's the liquid that is going to season the sauce of this bouillon. So don't add any water. You just add just about half a cup just so it doesn't burn in the pot and you let that cook on a low to medium heat for about 20 minutes. So whilst that's cooking, I am prepping everything that needs to be in this bouillon. So we have onions, we have watercress, I have plantains, I have potatoes that I will of course wash, peel and cut them down. I have spinach and I also have the yam. Now this yam is so bomb. I don't like yam. I'm not a fan of yam, but you can't have no Haitian bouillon with no yam in it, okay? This is yellow yam, so you're gonna peel that off, wash it really nice, and chop it. It does get really slimy, but don't worry about that, honey, because it is so delicious in bouillon. I'm also going to be chopping up some celery. I'm also going to be adding carrots, butter, and corn. I don't have it to show you here, but I will be adding it. As you watch, you'll see. After 20 minutes, look at how this sauce looks. If you know how bouillon tastes, honey, you know, looking at that sauce, that is some flavored bouillon sauce, okay? So this is what you need. It should be looking something like this. And now I'm going to just mix it all in, make sure nothing's stuck at the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to add in my wash bag of spinach. I like to add the spinach in now because I feel like when I mix it into that natural juice, from the meat it just really has a nice taste however you can add the spinach at the end when you're adding your watercress but i just like to do it the way my mom does it and this is the time that she puts it in so that juice can just sit in the spinach but just keep in mind once you add the spinach in you do have a chance of it burning at the bottom of the pot and you don't want that because once that burns at the bottom of the pot the whole bouillon is ruined so you have to continuously go and mix it mix it make sure you're going to the bottom of the pot and you're mixing it that's if you're doing a huge pot like i am okay so you want to mix it and make sure that it's not stuck at the bottom of the pot so once that's all mixed in very well i'm gonna let it cook just for about five minutes i mean spinach cooks down very very quick at this time i have some water that's already on the stove and i'm bringing it to a boil you want to be adding in hot water okay because that's going to speed up the process and just make your life a lot easier so here i am adding in some water here i'm not going to add too much water at a time reason being is because if you add too much water at once that kills the entire taste of your bouillon you want to add the water a little at a time because remember all of that season and that juice that ran out of the meat the more water you add the more it eliminates from that taste so if you add your water a little at a time then it has time to really blend into the water and it will keep its taste I hope I explained that well, but you can pretty much see for yourself, even when I add all of that water, look, it still looks pretty good, okay? Again, you're gonna have to do some good mixing because you don't want that spinach to burn at the bottom. Now I'm adding in my dumplings. This is the time you add your dumplings in because you don't want them to be too soft, but you also don't want them to be undercooked. Nothing's worse than biting into some dumplings and honey, they are not done. Inside is not done. I add my dumplings at this time because I want when you bite into them dumplings, they are well done, but also not too soft. Then I'm going to add in my yams. So if you see the yams, they look a little discolored because I didn't put it in a plate with water. Once you cut your yam, your potato, and your plantains it's good to put it in a bowl of water because that keeps it from getting the discoloration but honey i didn't do it sometimes i don't do it you know but for the purpose of this video i'll explain that so you know when you're doing it if you don't want that discoloration you make sure you put it in a bowl of water but discoloration or not it's still gonna be bomb okay <laughs> guys i am a little bit extra okay 
So after I add my yams, this is the time for me to add a little bit more water. So I am going to add some hot boiling water to the pot and then I'm going to mix it all in, make sure nothing stick at the bottom of the pot. And then I will let that cook for another 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'm adding more water and then I'm going to add everything else. So I'm adding in my corn, my plantain, celery, carrots, everything's going in. Because I added all of the water that needs to be in now, of course the taste is going to diminish a little bit. So you taste it and see what is missing. So I need one more Maggie to just flavor it up, you know, cause that water took a lot of the taste out. So I'm putting in one Maggie and that's all I need because when I pre-seasoned my meat, I made sure I over seasoned it so that I don't have to season too much now. And that is the ultimate way of getting your bouillon to taste so delicious, guys, without adding any chicken broth or any chicken stock, honey. This bouillon is so good. Now I'm adding in my potatoes. That's the last thing to add because no one wants soggy potatoes in their bouillon. So you add the potatoes the last 10 minutes and then you seal the deal with a butter. The game isn't over until you put some butter in there, okay? And then after the butter, you wanna mix everything really, really well. And then you put in your onions on top. And after your onions, you will put in the watercress. Honey, watercress is the best. So delicious of bouillon. As you guys can see, I'm getting so excited because I absolutely love bouillon. My husband wants me to make this every single Saturday for him. That's how much he loves it. Actually, scratch that. He will take this every day, but mm -mm, honey, it's a lot of work to do bouillon. I love making it. It is delicious, but it is a lot of work to make it. But I do it about once a week or once every other week and it is never a fail. So this is what the bouillon looks like at the end. It is absolutely delicious. Definitely give this recipe a try. Follow these steps to the T and I guarantee you, you will impress whoever you're making this for. Definitely give this recipe a try. You will not regret. I know you're gonna enjoy it because it is that good. And I'm not just saying it because I made it. Honey, this bouillon is good. And everyone who has tried my bouillon always calls and asks for more. So let us know in the comment section when you do try this out. Let us know how it worked out for you. What was your favorite thing to add in bouillon? Because sometimes people make it with different things. Like I know one of my friends made it with goat meat. Honey, that was so delicious. I've never tried it with goat meat before, but if you tried it with goat meat, let us know. Or if there's anything that you add that I didn't add, let us know in the comment section. Give us some hints, give us some tips. Let us know how we can make this bouillon even better. What did I miss out that I didn't add that can make this even better? Thank you for kicking it in the kitchen here with me today. I hope you love this video enough to stick around by subscribing to this channel and coming back to our kitchen every time that we upload a new video of some great Haitian and Caribbean recipes. Bon appétit!